Good morning, this is CMAC with Urban Farmers. It's a beautiful day in Northern California. A little overcast and uh, we might even have some rain by Tuesday. Hopefully some rain by next weekend. Um, it's early spring and, and fruit trees have uh, leafed out. Uh, if you have time this weekend, half an hour to an hour of time, there are two chores that are important to do. And uh, we're gonna walk around I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite diseases for the for people that are new to growing fruit trees and then I'm going to show you probably the most important thing you can do right now to improve the taste and quality of your fruit. So let's go and before we go never go near your fruit trees without a, without these guys. You can prune fruit trees almost any time. All right. Let's get started. So on this walkway, I've planted two fruit trees, two peaches. This is an early peach, a sun crest. And right here is a late peach, a Rio also. Two of my favorite peaches. And they're pruned two-dimensionally because I don't let the trees get in the sidewalk. And as a result, since one side of it is all gone, they're easy to look into and see what's going on with the trees. They're growing on a space about, oh, I would say four feet wide. And uh, these trees have been in the ground for about three years. So let's talk about the disease. If you're growing peach or nectarine, you are most likely to get this disease. It's a peach leaf curl, starts with blemishes like these looks like a red blotch on the on the leaf and uh, eventually it distorts the leaf uh, it caused the leaf to elongate I don't know how well you can see this maybe I can just cut it and hold it here uh, the leaf turns color sometimes it's a gray sometimes it's whitish um, Sometimes it's brown. This is not dead tissue. It's very flexible. Um, but leaves change color. Here's another one. This, this one has turned brown. And the reason this uh, disease is a good uh, disease for people that are growing fruit trees uh, is manifold. First, um, it's a great teacher. It's uh, um, it comes back year in year out so if you don't learn about them the first year you get a chance to learn about it the second year and on the other thing that's good about this disease is you can see it without with naked eye from 10 feet away it's kind of spongy and uh, lastly it's a it's a forgiving teacher if you uh, if you fail to treat it this year it will come back next year and won't penalize you a, a great deal but if you ignore it year in year out then uh, yes you lose your tree this is what happens uh, in an advanced stage of the disease the leaves elongate this is about probably twice the size of the leaf right next to it and in case you're interested to know how the disease works basically the fungus uh, gets between the cells of the leaves stimulates the cells and then the cells begin to to divide and and grow in these out of space weird shapes look at this oh got a little friend in here um, The other thing about this disease is that by the time you spot it, there really isn't much you can do about it. You can, let's walk over to this tree. You can remove the, the leaves, you can prune the branches, but uh, it's, it's really kind of like trying to treat common cold. If, if your child gets common cold, uh, you can comfort them, but there really isn't much you can do to cure the disease. This is the same way. Right now, there's nothing you can do. Uh, then what happens is uh, the disease, the, the 
the infected leaves will fall beautiful green leaves like this will come back in its place and uh, in no time flat you're gonna forget that you had this disease so it's important if you have leaf curl that you write it down or better yet send me an email and I will remind you when time comes to treat it and that's another feature of this uh, this guy is that uh, it puts you in rhythm with uh, nature you no longer think of your gardening chores one week or one day at a time you have to treat this in November when the uh, when you have harvested the fruit the leaves are down that's the time where we can we can deal with this so uh, it's a it's a great great low disease just all you have to do is observe it write it down so you don't forget remember I told you to bring your pruners here's a branch that's pretty much dead nothing on it and there's no reason to leave this on the tree next fall this time these little branches are gonna look exactly like the branches that uh, are dormant and you won't know, know the difference so now is the time to clean all these little twigs that have died off of your tree the other thing we need to do is thin the fruit look how many pieces of fruit are on this one little tiny branch uh, in fact look at this a pencil size branch I counted it has 16 or 17 pieces of fruit there's no way this branch can carry that many fruit um, you can probably leave one maybe two on this branch and that's it so they all have to be removed I typically use my wrist as a guide and in the space of uh, my wrist I let one piece of fruit to stay there's a whole video on this that I made last year I'll put a link here on the bottom you can go and check it out it gives you the reasons behind why we do this as well as how to go about doing it that's it if you have any questions feel free to write to me you know where I am or write a comment below and I'll be glad to answer your questions thank you